I think Jelani Woods could be uh, a red zone target for them uh, because he always. I, I'm I'm sorry. That boy is huge, bro. He's six exactly. Seven. Yes, thank you. It's He's six size. seven two sixty. That's ridiculous. Exactly, and he can always come off the line and act <laughs> like he's blocking, and then just do like a little cut anywhere to an open window, and Rogers can throw him the ball. Like Rogers can make any pass, and if Jelani Woods can just have just not stone hands, and like if he can just you know have fundamentals with the ball, I think he. I think he could be a really great project. Um, he runs a four six one at six seven two sixty man like that's that like you said that's impressive yeah so like that's unreal like so I think we would both agree he's a pretty decent pass catcher yeah I mean from what we've seen in this film I, I you can't say that he's a big dropper yeah you know I think he's six seven he's two sixty mm-hmm. he's gonna be the biggest dude on the field every time he steps on the field if you can line him up with like a Buckus kind of guy who can teach him how to work the line and block mm-hmm. and come off the line and Mercedes you know, Lewis as a mentor that'd be know. amazing dude that would do that would be great for his career mm-hmm. but the possible return you could get on a dude like that like Logan Thomas is 6'6 yep. uh Tyler Eifert is 6'6 so like those are players who both have you know like pretty decent ceilings as far as fantasy goes right for, for a tight end you know or at least they've been there like they've been number one tight ends at one point you know respectively in their in their teams if you train Jelani, mm-hmm. like, you just give him a year to develop and learn the game and learn, like, schemes and blocking yeah. and just, you know, polish your shit off more. I mean, by year two, by year three, you could see a really good return on him. Right. Like, as a, as a player in fantasy and in real real life. I, I, think it, I think the NFL teams know that as well. And that's why I know he's going to be a day three pick because of that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't see him going anywhere before round five. And if he does go round five... I honestly think it's to the Packers. Like I think like they could pick up someone like that, and they can they can have a project tight end. Like I mean, if they truly do lose Tunyon, that would be awesome. Then they have Degara, they have Mercedes Lewis, um, and then they would have this cat as their third. And they like to have three uh, fullbacks, or I'm sorry, three tight ends, and I think all of them kind of play their own different part. So I mm-hmm. think it'd be a really good fit for the Packers. Um, otherwise, I mean, there's, he, he could probably be a really good fit just about anywhere. Okay. Um, just because, like I said, he's, he's probably going to be a beast in the red zone just because of his body size. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, even if you do get him like somehow open in the open field somewhere, like, like we said, he runs a four, six, so he can, he can get you some yards after the catch. So. Wow. This guy looks good too. Uh, who are you looking at right now? Uh, Greg Dolchik, I think that's how you... Dolchik? Yeah. Dolchich. Yeah, Greg Dolchik. <laughs> He's out of U- uh, UCLA. He is another prospect that I've been looking at. I mean, as we're just going through the tight end spin cycle here, mm-hmm. I really like this guy. I um, He gives me, like, Greg Olson vibes when he's out there. You know, he has kind of, like, that mixed bag of tricks. Uh, he's kind of agile. Um, he is able to catch just about every ball, it seems like. Uh, fun fact in college, he actually had to add like 40 pounds of muscle. I guess he came in like, uh, I think Underweight he's six, maybe. Yeah, he was like 6'4 and uh, like two, uh, 208, I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess he probably wasn't 6'4. I bet he was like 6'2 or something. He probably really? grew into that. Okay. But yeah, dude, he had to put on like 40 pounds of muscle. And now you, you see the results. Like, he definitely <laughs> looks like a grown ass man out there. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, props to him for putting in the dedication to get his body right for that position. Yeah, he's 6'4", 245. Yeah, man. he's. Uh, I think he's going to be a really good prospect. Um, yeah, so I think he probably could have the same outlook as Greg Olson. Um, so, if you're looking dynasty-wise, if you're looking, like, where is this guy going to be drafted? Uh, dynasty, you could probably look to grab this kid. Um it kind of depends on, like, when Trey McBride uh, goes in your draft. But I would say you'd be safe taking this kid as, like, a late flyer in the late third. Yeah. Uh, and anywhere after that, if he's in, if he's available, I would take him after that, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, you might have to tax him for a year. You never really know <clears throat> where he lands. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think he has all the upside in the world. Um, he, he ran a four six nine. Um, he had a broad jump of 122, 
You know, like, it shows explosion. It shows, like, he's not just, like, a one-trick pony. Like, he's not slow. You know, he has, like, that medium range of being able to do uh, just about whatever he... Whatever you want him to do on the field, basically. Okay. But, I mean, the one thing that does kind of worry me is his bench press. Uh, he had 16 reps. I believe they do uh, reps of 225, so that's not bad. Um, I mean, I personally would just like to see a little bit more, but I think that's kind of like right in that me- happy medium area. Mm-hmm. See, and that's another thing that I'm noticing about these receivers. So there's Greg Dol- uh, Dolchik, mm-hmm. um, and then there's also Jeremy Record from OSU. Oh, dude, yeah, this guy, I mean, he's just, to me, he, he, I don't know, he did the Buckeye thing. He was, yeah, obviously, like, he came in, he was a true freshman, I believe. I don't think he redshirted or anything. Um, and I don't think he was extremely productive his first year as a freshman. He was probably just like a special teams guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and as sophomore year, it was kind of not necessarily his coming out party, but he, uh, he started to make some plays, yeah. uh, got introduced. He was catching passes from Justin Fields, okay. uh, Justin Fields for two years. So that was really good for him. Mm-hmm. Um, 2021 was probably his real coming out party. He made some. Sick ass catches, some sick ass touchdowns. I remember one in particular against the Badgers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was like the Big Ten Championship game or something. But mm-hmm. like it was just like this one handed grab, uh, like one of those. Oh, like uh, Odell. Yeah, like well, not like Odell, but like like over like I don't know, like he like Statue oh, of Liberty did yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and like it was just <laughs> it was the sickest thing in the world, man. Like it was uh super cool. I uh I really like him. I don't know. I think that him and another guy, um, Jake Ferguson, who we've talked about on the pod already. I think mm-hmm. I think both of them kind of gave me like Dallas Clark playmaker, but uh you know like they have hands like Jared Cook because both of those guys they have about the same size as Jared Cook, uh six five two fifty ish. So you know good size uh, tight end, so they're able to both block and. Yeah. Uh, you know, catch just about any ball. They have huge catch uh, radiuses. Yeah. Um. So yeah, those are two unreal targets See? that I have in the draft as well. Probably in that like that late third to you know wherever you can catch them after that. I like them. Mm-hmm. And so like when I look at tight ends, I mean obviously you want to see the upside of them being able to catch the ball. Right. Like you want to make sure the dude can catch a couple passes, so when he gets his opportunity, he shines with it. Absolutely. But one thing that kind of worries me a little bit about Jelani Woods from Virginia, yeah. and he's the 6'7", 260, just monster. Just a beast. Just a big guy. Um, is the fact that he kind of catches with his body more so. That's true. He has a lot of body catches, and the reason, uh, like, if you've never... The reason receivers hate, and coaches especially hate body catches, is to catch a ball, you need it essentially perfectly placed like it needs to hit you in the numbers Mm -hmm. and there needs to not be a defender like in immediate range but as you get to the nfl that's not gonna happen right these dudes have been playing this at a high level for years like you don't get a lot of body catches and if you do i mean cool maybe you get a touchdown off it and whatever but what i like about um you know players like jeremy ruckert or greg dolchich or even jake ferguson a little bit is like jeremy for example has really good hands yeah he can catch the ball no matter where it is, as long as it's relatively close to his body. Right, yeah, just get it towards him, and he'll make a ball, or he'll make a play on the ball. Exactly. So, like, even if he doesn't create a lot of separation at the next level, mm-hmm. he can still get his catches in because he has a larger radius to hit him at, you know? Right, and, you know, he's going to be on the field blocking, uh, yeah. like, in blocking situations and stuff like that because of his body. Mm-hmm. You know, six five. Uh, 250. Yeah, you gotta have that body out there. Exactly. So he's gonna be out there, man. Like he's gonna get his reps. So and like for tight ends, I mean, you have so many jobs. You're either blocking, you're either catching, you're either blocking and then going out for a catch. Mm-hmm. So with tight ends, I mean, the first thing you kind of learn when you want to be a receiving tight end is how to create separation. Mm-hmm. So how to get off the D end and how to create separation with the outside linebacker, maybe a slot cornerback is in there. And so you need to learn how to run routes. You need to know when to cut, how hard to cut, when to prep for the ball. And that's a whole... Guys, you're out. Realistically, as as easy as it could sound to some of us, like, to physically make your body do it and do it well enough to get past all-star DBs, OLBs, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, that takes at least a year or two at work. Right. Like, that's something that you kind of 
learn about early in the season, you work on it throughout the season, and then you go super hard at it, like in the off season. Definitely. And so with that already kind of being a learning curve, let's say tight ends go through a year of learning how to separate, Mm -hmm. and then they go through a year of learning how to actually block as well. Right. Block at a high level, especially if you get somebody, you know, a team with a good D, DN. Mm-hmm. And then the third year is usually learning how to catch. Right. And you know what they say about tight ends. Typically, they have a three-year. It's about a three-year window before they really hit. Yep. Those are the three essentials that you need to learn at a high level. And the best of the best will learn all three at an insanely high level, like a Travis Kelsey. Um, you know, like a Mark Andrews. They'll learn how to block, pass, catch, mm-hmm. and you know, get separation within that time period. Right. And so my delay with, and I'm, I'm sorry to go so long about it. Um, but Jelani Woods, because as good as his frame is, he's going to need, he's going to realistically need a year for all three. Well, absolutely. But I mean, like when you're taking them in like the late third, fourth, fifth, I mean, as long as you're getting points from a guy, like if he could, like, I'm not saying, like, the guy is going to become, like, a number one threat like a Kelsey or anything like that. Like, I don't know if his body is truly uh, made to do that, really. I yeah. mean, like, he's just, he's so big. Like, you're going to always, be, I feel like, have someone by him. Mm-hmm. Um, But, I mean, like, that's the same thing with Kelsey. Like, obviously, every team is out there trying to block him, and he still make goes out there and makes plays. So, who's to say if he can't, can or cannot be? But I don't know, man. Just like with with being two sixty, I just feel like that's a that's a tough punch, and I think like his body might. I don't know. Like, what if he just deteriorates a little bit more just because yeah. he's running around at that weight for Fair. so long? Who knows? I mean, best luck to him though. I think he's gonna <laughs> be sure. a great player. He's so, a great prospect. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of tight ends, where would you have ranked Noah Fant as a dynasty tight end last week? Last week, I mean, I don't know. I would say you'd have to have him in, like, the top 15. I mean, that's where I would have him. I don't know. And honestly, even with what I think you're going to say with the huge trade that happened. Oh, big trade. Oh, dude. Like, it's unreal. So, yeah, you have Drew Locke and you have Noah Fant. You have Shelby Harris, uh, who's a uh, defensive tackle, uh, two firsts, two seconds, and I think like a fifth. They're all getting shipped up to Seattle. Yep. Uh, and then you got Russell Wilson, Mr. Three himself, Team Three, and a fourth round pick. Mm-hmm. Man, they are going to Denver to the Broncos, man. That's unreal. Who? So, of all of the, like, positional players, mm-hmm. so, like, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Javante Williams, um, who do you think gets the biggest boost from Russell Wilson? So, I would say... I would probably, honestly, say Judy. Yeah. Just because I feel like so many of the times, like, he is out there, like, getting... Like, he typically gets a lot of separation, and then, like, Locke just never really found him out there. Like, he was always looking for, like, a bigger body. Yep. So, I think Russell Wilson, he's just able to make those split-second decisions, uh, you know, just a little bit more accurately than what uh, we saw with Locke. Drew Locke do. Yeah, so I just think that Ju- uh, Judy gets a bigger uh, pick up in that. Which I'm really pissed about because I just traded him to you uh, how many weeks ago? So About a week ago. Oh, I feel like a horse's ass. I feel I feel like a horse's ass right now. Um, but you know what? I got a second out of it, so I can go out there try to get like a George Pickens type. George who, Pickens, who can have just as much upside depending on which team he goes to. What if he goes to the Packers? That'd who be knows? Insane. Yo, so, question. What's up, bro? Question. All right. So, where do you rank Cortland Sutton in terms of all receivers in a redraft next year? In a redraft? In where a redraft. Do I, Not Dynasty and redraft. Where do you rank Cortland Sutton? So, I would have to say I would put Sutton within... Like, I don't want to be pushing anything, but at least, like, top 30. I think that's super fair. I don't mm-hmm. know. Like, I just think, like, he's a great... Like, he's a huge body. He's super <clears throat> smart. I think he has a lot of 
like not necessarily like the same traits as what Judy does. Uh, but like I think like he's just a bigger body Judy. I'm not sure if I'm overextending with that or anything, but like I just think he has great hands. I think he is able to make extremely uh or I guess he's able to make enough separation for quarterbacks to throw him the ball. Like mm-hmm. even Drew Locke was able to see the separation. And so I don't know, like he it seemed like he was always open as well. Um I'm just I'm excited to see what an accurate quarterback can do for these guys. Oh my god, it's gonna be incredible. But another thing that I'm also thinking about as well is they're gonna be throwing the ball a lot more and a lot more confidently, obviously. For sure. Um so it's it's just really interesting to see where the target share goes and where it goes per game. Because honestly, dude, with a three headed monster like that it's almost like having, I don't know, man. Like, do you remember how, I feel like it was, I feel like it was like the Patriots. Like when they had like the three headed monster year or three headed running back scheme that year. Oh my God. Like with uh, James White. Yeah. And like all those, like you just never knew who was going to start and who was going to pop off. I think that's almost going to be like the same thing for this. You think so? Yeah, dude, because you have Tim Patrick, who's also a beast. Yeah. The guy never drops a fucking pass. He's tall as fuck, too. He's tall as fuck. You have Cortland Sutton out there as well, who obviously I think has all the potential in the world. And Jerry Judy, <laughs> who is an extremely good prospect, who just hasn't had a great quarterback since he got into the NFL, so you can't really put too much shit on him. Damn, bro. Like, he... Everyone sees all the potential in him, but like he's just been in kind of a bad situation, especially with two other great uh, wide receivers in there, and a tight end who would also take away some of those targets, which is gone. Mm-hmm. But you have this Albert O guy who is supposed to be like the next big thing, which I don't see, but I guess a lot of people are high on him. So, the way I look at it. And some of this information I got through just from reading Twitter reactions from other users Mm -hmm. when the trade happened. That's fair. Yeah, I take a lot of my (laughs) sources from there as well. (laughs) Yep. So is it Nathaniel Hackett? Is the Yeah, he he was the old uh, Packers offensive coordinator who's the head coach there now, yeah. So the Packers ran one of the heaviest RPO offenses essentially in the league. Yep. Now, with the RPO, it's a run-pass option. Yep. So you're either giving the ball to the back and they're making a decision, yep. or you're keeping the ball as a quarterback and you're running. Now, who's the pass? No, or you have the pass or you option. pass it obviously you too. Got the pass option. I apologize, I'm bugging. But who's the Packers quarterback? Aaron Rodgers. So you never run it. You never run it with a quarterback. So it's either a handoff or it's a pass. Right. Which takes away the third option. Yep. I think with Russell Wilson running that same scheme, Russell Wilson's gonna dip a few times. Yeah. I think his rushing goes through. A new, I think his rushing totals go to a new high that we haven't seen in a few years. Yeah, so like, kind of, I feel like some of those times when Rodgers, obviously he takes off when he needs to. You know, like he'll make measurable decisions. Yeah. Uh, I think Russell, okay. I think he's just more uh, capable with his body. I think he's just faster, uh, more jittery. You know, I think he might uh, trust his body a little more to take a bit of a hit. Yeah. So, like, if he might make, like, the wrong decision and take a little bit of a hit, he's going to be at it. So, um, I wanted to go through the roles that I think these three receivers are going to have. Yeah, go ahead. What, hit me with them. So, Jerry Judy gets the biggest boost in my eyes. And the reason I think he deserves that mm-hmm. is because with the RPO option, I mean, I see him being the primary, the primary option on a lot of those plays yeah just because you think you can make quick hitters yeah quick hitters quick Quick juke get open five seven yard slant nobody on that team runs any any route in general better than judy right but he's also probably like he's pretty speedy true but what if uh i mean obviously teams can always start keying on that type of stuff and start making adjustments towards that so like if that starts to happen and you start seeing the backside open with like a sutton or uh, Tim Patrick, what you say that they might start being the bigger hitters after that? I see them more so as like downfield blockers. You really think so? Because they're both bigger. They're both like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, you give Judy the quick hit slant and he runs downfield and Cortland Sutton and True. Tim Patrick. But get... on, on some of those RPOs, the quarterbacks really like having those those big targets. 
Because, I mean, no like... No doubt, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, like, the heat of the moment, like, you're literally looking for the guy who has your uniform. And, I mean, Judy's a... He's a big cat himself. I think he's, like, 6'1", still. Like, I think he still has a big body. Yeah. But, like, it's always good to see, like, someone else out there. And, obviously, you can't give... No. You, you can't give Judy every single reception or every target. Yeah. So, I just think, like, you gotta... I, I think Nathaniel knows how to share the ball with those three. I think that was probably like a huge thing that they talked about in his interview was how they were going to utilize those three guys. Yeah. Um, And so, I don't know. I think they have a plan. I think they know how they're going to utilize them. So, with Cortland Sutton, I think that he's definitely going to have a downfield presence. Yeah. Kind of similar to how DK did with the Seahawks, but... I think he's the biggest guy they have on offense. He's a playmaker. He's also going to be on the team for the next few years. He's signed a big contract. Would you say that uh, Jerry Judy is like the Tyler Lockett then? I think Jerry Judy is like the Tay. And Cortland Sutton is MVS. Interesting. I don't know. No, Cortland Sutton. I can't say he's Corden, MVS at all. Cortland Sutton. Because if Cortland Sutton is MVS, then um, Tim Patrick would be Alan Lazard. But I think that Cortland Sutton is going to play more of an Alan Lazard role. Well, I think they're all going to be their own players, honestly. I think this is kind of going to. I think this is going to be completely different than what we've ever seen the mm-hmm. four run, because Nathaniel Hackett might have his own ideas that we've never even seen before. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to see it. Like Rogers was obviously super uh, excited with like about him and like his brain, how he thought. So I'm honestly I'm 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 excited to see how this all plays out. How does how does Rogers staying in Green Bay affect uh affect like AJ Dillon, Aaron Jones, Devontae Adams? Well know. let's talk about how Aaron Rodgers affected someone in our own podcast here first. What? So alright folks. The second the news broke about Aaron Rodgers being confirmed to the Packers I had a trade in my uh, inventory just on lock. It's been there for about two weeks. Uh, it was for a first round pick in 2024. Oh. Yo, this was a bad trade. For This was a terrible. Sh- <laughs> that trade was ass, bro. It was for the 2024 first round pick that I held for my team for Aaron Rodgers straight up. Let me defend myself. Let me. I told him not to do it. Let me defend myself and say this: that Jahia did not tell me not to do it. I did tell you. Well, I, t- uh, I told you after, but I didn't know about it before. Yeah, exactly. You told me. All right, after. that's the fact. I was capping. My yeah, bad. let's not cap on this My show. Bad. You're spreading misinformation. I apologize. So let me defend myself first. Okay. In my defense. In Dugo's defense. My quarterbacks are trash. He had Zach Wilson and Matt Ryan and Daniel Jones and Taylor Heineke. And to my defense, my starter was Taylor Heineke, who just today, the Washington Commanders, we are commanders. commanders. They just traded for... (laughs) That's definitely not the... (laughs) Carson (laughs) Wentz. That's a terrible (laughs) fucking (laughs) answer. Yo, that's whack. Pat McAfee just made that shit up and it went. No way, dude. No, dude. No, like, that's a real thing, man. No, it's not. That's a real thing. That's a nasty thing, dude. I never want to hear that at an NFL game. Dude, I'm going to do that. I am so excited. I am so excited for that. Oh, but we gotta, dude. We got to go to a game. Yeah. So, they just got Carson once. And so, to me, having Taylor Heineke probably going to be their backup now and him used to be my starter it makes the trade seem a little bit better to look at in my eyes but obviously <laughs> I, I still know i overpaid i mean but like dude you gotta come from it from my perspective i'm a diehard right. packer fan i love this cat um you know what this is my platform to talk about my shitty trades um, no let's, let's... but i want to i want to clarify what the trade was dugo traded a first rounder in 2024 for aaron Rodgers. Yeah, the the greatest uh, thrower of the ball to ever step foot on a field. In yes. 2024, Aaron Rodgers is going to be 40 years old. Okay, look at what Tom Brady was doing at 40 years old. It's possible. We still don't know the details of that contract, and that was like two or three days ago. Yeah, dude, what if it's like a seven-year contract? Didn't Rodgers tweet like, during all the Russell Wilson shit? Like, yeah, hey, yo, that was cap. 
and then like we just never heard anything. Well, like, we he, didn't hear shit after. Bro, bro like, basically what he said is he was like, hey, like the four year two million, like he was like that's cap, like that's not true. He's like, what is true is I'm coming back to the Packers. I have made that decision. The contract stuff that I supposedly signed is not correct. It's misinformation. Facts. So, um, yeah. So, I don't know. Like, I, you know, with all the talks of it, it seems like this contract is truly going to be team-friendly. I hope like, so. Like but a, what's team-friendly, though? Like a Tom Brady-type contract. So, do they sign him to a two-year deal? No, they probably sign him to, like, a five-year deal. Probably throw some voyeurs on it. So, well, they throw the voyeurs on Yeah, I know, I know. So, they can get him his bonuses his and stuff. Because you gotta... You, I, Back to back MVP, the guy deserves. Yeah, he, to get he, paid. he deserves a bigger contract than anybody. So I think it's gonna be pretty big still, but I think it's gonna be it's gonna be constructed to be uh, team friendly. And Yo. I don't know, I'm excited, man. Like the the band's back together. And did you see that? Um, so I know we don't have to talk about defenses and stuff, but the Packers are t- uh, like. Uh, they're one of the front runners for one of the Chargers def- uh, edge defenders. Who? Um, I forgot his name. He was number forty-two for the Chargers. Um, I really like him. I but his name is to me is extremely hard to pronounce. Uchenna Nwosu. Yes, thank you. Um, he was in the twenty eighteen draft. He's still pretty young. Yeah, but I think he, he's twenty five. I think he's a. I think he's a free agent. I think he was like a third uh, day three pick or something. So I think he was able to get off his rookie deal. Did we ever sign uh, Zadarius back? No, I think we're gonna drop him, but I think he's gonna be the replacement, and I think it's gonna be him and uh, uh, Preston Smith and uh, Rashawn Gary all like splitting time together. Yeah. And I think we're also gonna, uh, I think we're gonna draft another edge defender as well. So. What do you think we do in the first round? As a Packer fan. As a Packer fan, I would love. To see us get a wide receiver. Jamison Williams would be crazy. I don't think he falls, dude. I think because he's so, like, it, it, would, seems, it seems like he's ahead of track for his ACL. Yeah, so, like, and he would be a t- he would be a two or three. He's easily the second or third best when healthy. Yeah. But would you take Chris Olave, who's probably going to fall towards the end of the first? I don't think he's going to fall either. I think they're really? all going to. Dude, I honestly think we're going to be, like. If the Packers want to take a flyer on someone in the first round with a wide receiver, like as a wide receiver, we're gonna be looking at like Jahan Dotson, Christian Wilkins, oh, dude, Jahan would be or Chris- Christian Watson, um, and we'll probably have like uh, David Bell and all those like mid guys, you know. <laughs> Honestly, like, well, I'm sorry, but let's 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 let's, let's look at it, okay. <laughs> you got J-Mo What the you got... fuck dude, You cannot bro, Shut you just... up Let me explain no, You myself. just call David Bell mid Kinda dude Like if you compare him to J-Mo Compare him to J-Mo And tell me he's not Bro mid. you don't even drink J-Mo I don't want to hear you say Nothing disrespectful about Jameson Williams Bro All I'm saying All I'm saying is Compared to David Bell I'm sorry, but compared to Jameson Williams, David Bell is like he's... Yo, David Bell's middle name is Kyrene. Is he big baby Reem? Maybe. Maybe. Two phone baby he, Reem? He honestly might just ream your team in the ass if you take him in the first. Oh, dude, that... I had a sick ass line in my head, but I can't say it. <laughs> say it. I can't say it. You gotta say it, dude. I don't wanna say, say it. Say it for the pod, dude. <laughs> I can't say it. Say it for the bottom. I can't. I no, can't. I'm cool. I'm no. cool. All right, whatever. Um, baby Reem. Yo, if we get David Bell, I'm getting a customized Packer jersey that says Baby Reem. That's, that's no, I can't that's corny. That's corny. Um, but honestly, I don't know, man. Like, I could honestly see us like getting like Jordan Davis if he falls. Like that would be huge. He's that defensive tackle from uh, Georgia, who ran the four seven. The guy's 6'8", 341. Just a beast. Yo, another question, actually. What's up, dude? Um, Have you ever been to Dallas? I've never been to Dallas. <sighs> Do you know who Dallas' top receiver is? Uh, C.D. Lamb, yeah. I agree. Amari <laughs> Cooper's different, dude. They're going to release him. 
Um, where would you? Where do you think Amari Cooper is going to land? First off, because we, me and Dugo, for background reference, have been like throwing Amari Cooper trades back and forth. I have Amari Cooper. He has draft picks. I have no draft picks, and my team's kind of mid. But we've been uh, discussing trade offers, and I'm trying to get a first for Amari. Yeah, while we're talking about team statuses, mine's on the brink of to a championship right now. Mine's a championship. Bro, what? You didn't even make the playoffs last year. Yeah, but with the acquisition of Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> dude. And my team's Your team finally, is actually pretty good. Dude, and my team's finally going to get healthy. Well, the one bad thing is I lost Robert Woods at the end of the year, but honestly. Honestly? Do you want to trade for Robert Woods right now? I'll give you Robert Woods and a fifth for uh, Amari. Robert Woods in a second. No. No. Perfect. I think, bro, if Amari goes to the Falcons, he would go crazy on the Falcons. Yeah. He would go nuts. Dude, I think Robert Woods would go crazy on the uh, Rams as which he has the last couple of years. Can I ask? So, I, I think you should take the wait, trade. Wait, friend or friend, can I ask you a question? What's up? If Amari goes to the Falcons, is he a top 10 receiver? No. Is he a top 20? Probably. Is he a top 15? No. You a hater, bro. I would call him probably top 20. He's definitely top 15. I don't no know about way, top 10. Dude. Bro, he finished last year as 27, and he had the second worst season of his career. Okay. Wait. He's going to get more target share on whatever team he goes to. He's going to score about the same amount of touchdowns. He scored eight last year. And he's going to get more catches, more targets, and probably more yards. He had, like, 700 yards this year. All those are alleged. Like, what if he goes to a team that is extremely stacked? If he's the number two like, option if... on a team, he's the 1B. Okay. He's not the two, he's the 1B. Okay, but, like, that still doesn't mean that he's going to get the same amount of receptions and stuff. Like, if they go to a completely stacked team because he wants to go ring chasing, like, obviously he's still going to have a great season. Like, he's still going to be a great wide receiver. Top twenty is still a great wide receiver. No doubt, that's still a great. That's still a great season. But fifteen to be between ten and fifteen is like you're either wide low end wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two. Yeah. And wide receiver one and wide receiver two in terms of fantasy, in terms of dynasty, right? In terms of even trying to make trades, that's really important. And that's why I see that I see him as a high wide receiver too. I don't know if you can be. Wide receiver 7, eh, I guess you could. Because most teams are 10 or 12 people. So if you're wide receiver 17. It means that you drafted Are you well. a high-end wide receiver too? Well, that just means that the owner drafted well also. Maybe. I mean, like, tip, like, a lot of teams, they have, like, two, like, top 15, top 20, like, wide receivers or something like that. Or they have, like, two, like, top 20 running backs. You know, like, typically teams have, like, something that's, like, stacked up. Do you take any credence to the fact that Amari Cooper is 27 if you're trying to make a trade for him in Dynasty? Well, I mean, like, 27 is still, like, a prime age. Like, I mean, to me, 27 shows that you have experience. You're still, obviously, a, a prime commodity. Like, you're not falling out anytime soon. And yep. teams know that. And so, like, they're going to sign you probably to a longer-term deal, like a three-, four-year deal. Yep. Um, and, I mean, you're still going to be relevant in the league, which means you're still going to get target share, which means you're still going to get yardage. You're still going to get touchdowns, which is great. Mm -hmm. I just, like I said, man, like, I just don't know if he's great enough to get with, like, inside the top 15. Like, I just think he's a, a top 20 wide receiver. You tagged me at something on Twitter or on Twitter. Yeah. I found it very disrespectful. What was it? I just want to make it known that I found this. Very disrespectful. Okay. I posted something about Amari Cooper and how well he runs routes. Yeah. Amari Cooper runs amazing routes. If you've ever watched Amari Cooper film, you know he runs insane routes. He gets off the line extremely well. He has a lot of bursts in and out of breaks. He obviously has great hands, so he makes a lot of, you know, bad passes look great. And so I tagged... he Eric responded on Twitter... Uh, like in the reply option, and he listed 10 receivers that he thought caught, that ran routes better than Amari Cooper. Sure do. I could run through that list right now, too. Yeah, run through want. it, run through it, run through it. Yeah, let me run through it. it. I'm going to call you out when it when it, when it comes up, too. I'm a... And when I call you out for it, you're going to know I'm going to call you out before it, before no, I call you dude, out. No, dude, I got I to gotta find it here quick. 
If you can find it before me, I'll let you read off the list. But... This was a disrespectful ass list, bro. Like, I don't even want to read it. Okay, I got But it. I got to give the listeners All right. reference. All right. So. You ain't so... even got to read off the first part. Read off the second one. All right. So he's like, who runs better routes? See below. And then it was just a picture or it was a video uh, of him running some pretty crisp Of Amari running routes, yep. And so I replied, better route runners. Okay. Who'd you put? Devontae Adams. Okay. Justin Jefferson. Okay. Keenan Allen. Not mad. De- 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 DeAndre Hopkins. Debatable. Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Hunter Renfro. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. TD Lamb. Wait, go back two people. Go back two people. Who? Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro runs better routes than Amari Cooper. 100%. That's cap. I will. I'll pull put- up a video right now. You want to tell me that number... Hunter Renfro does not run better routes than Amari Cooper. You're telling me that the number 27 wide receiver in the NFL runs better routes than the number 11? That's disgusting, bro. It is disgusting of how you think that they run better routes than him. Amari's entire career highlight... Like, if you look at... Bro, bro, have you... Hunter Renfro! Bro, he's cool. Bro, Hunter Renfro does not run as fast as Amari. He doesn't cut as well as Amari. Amari has a better fucking three-cone drill. Amari probably has a faster 40. Amari has better hands. Actually, Hunter Renfro's hands are pretty good. That's why he's good. No. So, a couple of those things are false. Hunter Renfro cuts better. He is not faster. You're right. What's his three-cone drill? I don't know. but I want to find it. Just because he... That's agility. That matters his agility. But that doesn't mean that... Because... Amari Amari has overall speed. I will give him that. Overall speed over Hunter Renfro, I'll give him that. But overall routes, no fucking way. I'm looking it up. I got the I got the uh, the combines that's pulled up. Great, yeah. So Hunter Renfro ran a six point eight second three cone drill. Okay. If you guys don't understand what a three cone drill is, it's basically just running. You're backpedaling for the second half of it, and then you're running straight again. I don't know why you're trying to reach for all these measurables when the only measurable you have to look at is what they're doing on the screen and how that reflects to how they're producing. We're watching a Hunter Renfro Renfro video right now. I'm going to throw on Amari Cooper and tell me the difference. Tell me the difference. I will tell you the difference. difference. Should I pause it? Should I pause it? Nah, dude. All I'm saying... Dude, you don't even have to pull up the video because we saw what what you had already for Amari Cooper highlights. I'm just saying, dude, like, this cat is so much better at running routes than him. No, he's not, dude. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yo, if you're watching this on YouTube, in the comments below, let us know who you think runs better routes between Hunter Renfro and Amari Cooper. That's a crazy-ass sentence I just said, and I feel like that shouldn't be an argument. But I'm going to pull up some Amari highlights after we watch two minutes of Hunter Renfro. Dude, oh, we've already watched a bit of Amari. I don't understand why we always have to watch this bomb-ass guy. Bro, because you got to watch him in real time. Oh, wow, yeah. Real time matters. Oh, yeah. Yo, check it out. Look at that. Wow, it's the same video that I watched a couple oh, hours ago. Oh, of... oh, oh. That's, set, that's a fly route. That's a great fly route, though. Get the fuck out of here. What are you talking about? Look at this. He's on the edge. Like, oh, oh, look at that cut. Look at the catch. Look at the catch. You're, you're telling me that we didn't see any highlights of Hunter Renfro doing anything similar nah, to that. I'm already goaded, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already dude, goaded. Look at some shit. point, you might just be a fucking fanboy and you have to get over bro, yourself. Bro, what? The number 27 wide receiver against the number 11. Bro, you judge He's here. the number 27 wide receiver in one of his worst years. Oh. Am I, are you kidding me? He had C.D. Lamb. He had Dalton Schultz. He had Ezekiel Elliott. Tony Pollard. Four viable options to all touch the ball before he does. And don't throw in Michael Gallup or Cedric Wilson, who are also above average receivers in the NFL. He's going to go somewhere like the Falcons, like the Patriots, like the Jaguars. And he's going to be essentially the primary, like, target option on their offense if he's on a team like the Chiefs that has a Tyree kill or the Chargers that have a Keenan Allen then he'll be the one B how about this I'll put 20 bucks on that he's not top 11 next year I don't know where he's going like if I goes, don't care put if you're so confident in him then put bro him. I'm not trusting him with Tua okay what cool. if he goes to Miami cool then he don't trust his ability no I trust his ability I don't trust the ball getting to him okay well we the just ball saw... has to get there too 
you talk all the shit in the, the world ball, the about ball Derek Carr, the ball, and no, that's no, no, what no, Hunter no. Renfro just did the, with him. Yo, the ball's gonna get there with Matt Ryan and the Falcons. The ball's gonna get there with Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. Like, yeah, but talk shit about Hunter Renfro. The getting, ball's gonna get there with Mac Jones and the Patriots. Yeah, but talk shit about Hunter Renfro getting the ball from Derek Carr. Bro, Derek Carr is an above average quarterback. Yeah, and so is Tua. Tua, that's very debatable. That's in extremely this new debatable. Scheme, he could be above average. We ain't seen shit, and he ain't shown me nothing to show that he's above average. All right, dude. Well, he was above average in college, so I get. Oh, him. so now college he, is just what they're gonna yeah, do forever. Well, like you said, a lot of people have that three-year span, and he's going into that third year. Well, let's fucking see it then. Then I'll make a decision. I don't know why you're shitting on the guy so early. Bro, I'm not shitting on the guy. I'm just saying he hasn't shown me anything to be considered an above-average quarterback. Okay. Well, all I'm saying that is when he is, you're going to be eating your words. I'll eat them. I'll eat them. Yeah. And I you're think... not even going to take this $20 bet either. You're kind of a pussy. Bro, you're a bitch. Yeah, you just don't trust your guy. I know Hunter Renfro would be top 11 wherever he goes. I'll bet you money that Amari... I'll bet you 20 Amari Cooper finishes ahead of Renf... Hunter Renfro next year. How much? I'll put 50 on it. No. <laughs> well, yo, you don't want to make the bet? I don't want to put 50 on it. Put 20 on it. No, that's all good, bro. Put 10 on it. No, because you, you, would, you would say that he... Amari Cooper's going to finish ahead of Hunter Renfro because he's better. Allegedly. Oh, but doesn't want to bet on Allegedly. Him. Dude, I have no clue because what if they do get like a star wide receiver again in Al- or in Las Vegas? Then his target share is going to go I mean, out. they're probably going to draft a receiver. Exactly. But so, if he's as good as you say he is, and he's still going to have a role. Yeah, he's going to have a tremendous role. But yeah. if... Amari goes to Miami and he gets 75% target share. I'm sorry. I just don't see that happening if Hunter Renfro gets shut down to like 33% target share. All right. You know, that's all I'm saying because guess what? The Raiders also have Darren Waller. The Raiders also have Zay Jones. (laughs) The Raiders also have... I don't. Uh, well, Foster the thing, Monroe. The thing about Hunter Renfro is that he's actually pretty talented. Like he ended the year last year as wide receiver eleven. That's what I've been saying. No, I'm not saying he's not talented, bro. But what I'm saying is, Darren Waller missed a lot of the season because of injury. They were obviously down in a lot of games. Hunter Renfro was amazing. Hunter Renfro is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. He's one of the best route runners in the NFL. I just think Amari Cooper is better, and I don't think that's like. Shade, I don't think that's crazy. Like, I think Amari Cooper is a really fucking good receiver. The biggest thing about him, obviously, is his health. Is he going to be on the field? I read some shit somewhere that I do have, like, eight foot injuries. Eight separate okay, foot well, injuries. Okay, well, if he can't consistently be on the field, then how can you, you consistently say that he's the best wide receiver? Because I've seen Amari Cooper on the field, and he plays... The last three years, I think he's missed one game. Amari? He just missed two games last year alone. Let me see. Let me see. Saying he's this fucking weird. Yeah, he missed one game this year. He missed two. He missed one. Back to backs. Wait, oh shit, was it seven? Oh, it's 17 games this year. Yep. You, you're right. So he missed two games this year, and then he played all 16 last year and all 16 the year before. Yep. So that's still two games in three seasons he, he's missed. That's awesome. Though. And his career, in his total career, he's missed a total of five games. And, and he's been playing since 2016, so we're talking six seasons of football. Yeah, but, I mean, now he's starting to prolong these injuries. I mean, Dog, it was an extra week because they have other weapons. Well, all I'm saying, dude, is, I mean, like, people start to disintegrate a little bit. So, like, if he's now starting to get his injury bug, I mean, the same stuff happened to Devontae Adams. A lot of those injuries that you'd play through... You now have to sit out a little bit. And we've seen Devontae have to sit out some weeks now. I think the Cowboys are crazy for getting rid of Cooper before they get rid of Zeke. I mean, I don't blame you there. I, I don't understand what they're doing with Zeke. I would never pay a running back who has been less productive than your number two. I think you could put like Pollard team. in there and they're actually better as a running I offense. would say so. Go yeah. get you like a fourth, fifth round, like downhill runner type person. Yeah. Damian like, Pierce. Damian Pierce would fit in the offense perfectly with yeah. Pollard. Just and just split, bro. Like you're not getting anything extra out of Zeke besides, you know, obviously leadership, locker room shit. But like yeah. you're really about to cut Amari Cooper, who's still pretty young and like is a good receiver. Right. Dak's QBR with Amari is amazing. Yeah, 
Yeah, man, I don't understand why they're cutting him either. That doesn't make any, like, logical football sense to me. Yeah, it, it's crazy, man. But, um, I mean, that's, that's that, I guess, is the, the thing that's supposed to happen. I think that's just, like, straight up, I'm, like, I think that's just Jerry Jones trying to, like, have, like, that, like, celebrity, like, personality. Like, Zeke's a really well-known player. Like, he sells a lot of jerseys. Well, so does Amari. Amari does, too, but Zeke's different, bro. Like, Zeke is, like... Yeah. Zeke definitely sells more merch and shit than Amari does. Yeah. He's the Cowboys running back, and he was damn good at it for since he's been in the league, basically. Right. right. He's still, like, a maybe, like, a low-end RB1, high-end RB2 still. That's disgusting. That's great. For his fifth or sixth year as a running back, you're still that productive? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I just feel like he keeps getting beat up. I don't know how much longer he's going to be out here. Question, would you take him in the first round? Who? Zeke in a 12 team? No. Another question for you. What's up? If you could... Let's take it back to the draft. If you could draft... If you could have a fantasy football draft yeah. in any city in America, where would it be? A fantasy football draft in any city in America? You and the boys all congregate four or five months in advance. You figure out a city to go to. Y'all pull up there for the weekend. You do the draft on a big ass draft board and tied of whatever Airbnb or hotel mm-hmm. or shit you got. What city would you want to do all that in? Uh, I would break it down to four cities off rip: Miami, Dallas, Phoenix, Las Vegas. In September, where would you want to go? Where would you not want to go in September? For me, you take Dallas off the list. Yeah. Dallas is cool, but, like, it's not that interesting to me. No, I would take Dallas off the list. So, uh, between the three, I would... Miami, Phoenix, Las Vegas. I'd probably go with uh, with Phoenix if I'm yeah. going to keep it a buck. I mean, the only reason why is because at the same time, like, they have uh, ASU mm, there as Miami. well. They have ASU, which obviously, I mean, if you go to Tempe, you, I mean, we went to Tempe that time and we had such a fun time there. Okay. And so I think like with uh, school being in session yeah. and, you know, just like the other, like just the other energy there, I, yeah. I think like it'd just be sick. Um, okay. And so. I like the, I like those picks too. Yeah. So I, I would say like something like Phoenix because like, I mean, you also have uh, Bud being legal there as well. Oh, so, that's a big, uh, that's a big influence. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would say, like, Phoenix would probably be my top choice uh, okay. if the boys were going to be congregating. Okay. Um, I like those. I'm going to steal one. I'm going to steal Vegas. Okay. I'm going to put Los Angeles on that. Yuck. I'm going to put Chicago on that. Disgusting. And I'm also going to put... I don't know if I want to go to Phoenix in September. Why would you want to go to Chicago in September? Because it's still warm. It's a big city. It's local to us folks who live in Minnesota, Wisconsin. So it's like, it's it's a car drive. So it's manageable, but it's still in the new environment. Yuck. And then I would put, honestly, I probably would have to go with Seattle. Why Seattle? I've never been to Seattle before. It's a big city. There's a ton to do. Mm-hmm. And it's still warm in September. So, Seattle would probably be the first one off my list. Yeah. Along with Chicago. Okay. So, realistically, that leaves it to Los Angeles, and that leaves it to... What was the other one? Wasn't it, like, Miami? Uh, I think so. Was it Miami? I don't know. I'm picking LA, though. I want to go to Los Angeles in September. It's warm. It's the beginning of September, damn near the end of August. Go get a cool little crib. Go fuck around in L.A. for a few days. Yeah, you do the same thing in Arizona for half the cost. Yeah, but Arizona doesn't have a beach. It's that matters. literally all sand. It's all red sand with no water. Find a lake. <sighs> Bro. Like, you don't have to pop out to the ocean. Like, Jesus Christ. I kind of want to be on the beach. That'd be cool. But that's also just a part of the trip and why I'd pick L.A. Yeah, it's the beach. That, that's disgusting. The view off the Pacific is actually super cool. Like, there's, like, a big-ass cliff when you go to Venice Beach. 
when you like look off into like the yonder or whatever you want to call it yeah and there's just a huge fucking cliff Mm -hmm. that's like super distant and like yeah, if you get it at the, the right ocean. angle, it's like clouds and all yeah, that kind I've of shit. Yeah, I've seen oceans and stuff before. It's cool, bro. And um, just there's a there's a ton to do, and so is right there too. I mean, you could do the same thing. You have State Farm Stadium there as well, right in Glendale. So Phoenix actually would be a pretty cool place. Too. I don't know, man. And yeah, maybe Phoenix would be cool. Like I'm saying, dude, it's like half the cost as well. You know, I only brought that up so we can. Start congregating on where we're going to draft this year. Yeah. Or Vegas. I, no, Vegas is the place to go. I would say so, dude. Like, Vegas is the place to go. That would be nah, dang. I'd, I'd go to Vegas. I've never been out to Vegas either. Vegas is it. I think that would be such a fun place. Crazy. All right. So, I think we covered a lot of what we wanted to talk about today. Yeah. Um, we talked about the Commanders, the Seahawks, Broncos, Rookie tight ends, Packers, Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper. Okay. Um, I don't really have much else. Nah. Dugo's all cleared out. Appreciate you guys for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. Let us know how we're doing. Comments are really important to me personally. Yeah. I want to hear feedback from you guys who listen to it. Um, and yeah, I'm out. My name's Ja. Dugo. Should we play like a go out song? Oh, yeah. Thank y'all for listening. Happy fishing. Still getting better, made so much cheddar, forgot what regular